program provided by the Ed and Don DeCarbo Funeral Home and Crematory Incorporated with two locations, 941 South Mill Street, Newcastle and 3000 Wilmington Road, Neshanic Township.
Good morning. Uh, today's Mass is going to be offered for Violet Tanner by son Ronald. Our supplement today is Father Ben. Uh, we'd like to start off with the prayer to the St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. For me, the measuring lines have fallen on pleasant sights. Fair to me indeed is my inheritance. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. For me, the measuring lines have fallen on pleasant sights. Fair to me, indeed, is my inheritance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who called the Bishop St. John Neumann, renowned for his charity and pastoral service to shepherd your people in America, grant by his intercession that as we foster the Christian education of youth and are strengthened by the witness of brotherly love, we may constantly increase the family of your Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we, must also, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us his spirit. Moreover, moreover we have seen and testify that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. In this is love brought to perfection among us that we have confidence on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment, and so one who fears is not yet perfect in love. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Responsorial song. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish, Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Sheba shall bring tribute. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and he afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to you, O Christ, proclaimed to the Gentiles. Glory to you, O Christ, believed in throughout the world. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. After the 5,000 had eaten and were satisfied, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and precede him to the other side toward Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. And when he had taken leave of them, he went off to the mountain to pray. When it was evening, the boat was far out on the sea, and he was alone on shore. Then he saw that they were tossed about while rowing, for the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. They had all seen him and were terrified. But at once he spoke with them. Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. He got into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely astounded. They had not understood the incident of the loaves. On the contrary, their hearts were hardened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Good morning. Anthony said in the sacristy that he was starting to expect to see my face on milk cartons and at the post office. Uh, it's good to be back with all of you. I had to burn some vacation time and I actually lost a week because I didn't take it. Uh, so I had the week after Christmas off, the hope being to spend time with my family. Uh, my parents apparently had other plans because they left the Monday after Christmas. They said, well, we want to have Christmas with our other grandchildren. I said, yeah, but I took the week off knowing that you would be here. Apparently that wasn't enough for them. Uh, today, as you heard in the prayer, we're celebrating St. John Neumann. And I want to make clear the distinction. St. John Neumann, N-E-U-M-A-N-N, -N, not John Henry Newman. Even I can sometimes get confused about which we're offering the Mass for until I look at the name and see the spelling. Uh, an easy way to remember, EU in German is pronounced like OI in English, so it's Neumann. The A actually should be a little bit of a different sound too. Uh, I'm not going to give a full description of his biography. It's actually quite long, given that he's a more contemporary saint, but I would encourage you to do so because there, it's a very interesting story about how it is that his life unfolded and his vocation unfolded. I'm just going to offer one brief point for personal reflection today. And the point is that saints are not as different 
or as distant from us as we might sometimes be inclined to think, especially when we see them in statues, uh, we hear their names at mass, and we see all of these things that they did, and they sort of seem at a distance, and you know, either I'll never get there, or it's just beyond me to try to either learn about them, understand them, or imitate them. I've mentioned, I think, many times that on my day off, typically, I spend my day off with a priest friend, Father Michael Ruffalo, who lives at St. Patrick's Church in the Strip District. And because I now arrive there by a different route than I did when I lived in Mount Lebanon, usually the last leg of that journey, I do a straight shot down Liberty Avenue. And if you've ever been to St. Patrick's, it's at the corner of Liberty Avenue and 17th Street. Three blocks closer to the city, there once stood St. Philomena's Church. I think it's an office complex now. But at the corner of Liberty Avenue and 14th Street, there used to be St. Philomena's Church. And if you ever walk down in the Strip District, if you've ever been to St. Patrick's Church, you'll see a little plaque on the front of the church, and it makes the following point. In 1839, individuals of the Redemptorist Order assumed responsibility for the pastoral needs of St. Philomena Church, parish, one could also say at that time, and then of course the surrounding area, which we know as the Strip District. And in 1840, specifically on October 18th, 1840, John Neumann, now St. John Neumann, arrived in Pittsburgh and offered Mass at St. Philomena's Church in the Strip District, not to be confused with the later one that was in Squirrel Hill. Uh, it was there at that church that he was invested with the habit or the vesture, one might say, of the Redemptorists. And so there's a very specific connection today with this city and with the saint that we celebrate. Another member of that order, you would probably recognize the name, he hasn't been canonized yet, but he is beatified. And I know that his name is specifically mentioned on St. Patrick's Church, and that's Blessed Francis Xavier Salos. So if you happen, I know now that we're in Newcastle and I'm not in Mount Lebanon, Pittsburgh seems a lot further away, but the next time that you happen to be in the city, go down to the Strip District, good luck finding parking. I can park in a rectory driveway, but I wouldn't encourage that. You'll probably get towed. Uh, but go down to the Strip District, find a parking spot, do some shopping, go to Penmac and get, I don't know, something interesting. But stop at St. Patrick's Church. That church has the replica of the Holy Stairs. Spend some time there in prayer. Go to St. Stanislaus Church, which is the one at the other end. Uh, I would recommend Pamela's for breakfast if you're down there in the morning. There's also Peace, Love, and Little Donuts if you've not made a New Year's resolution to lose some weight. But while you're down there, just walk around the Strip District and recognize that as you are following in those steps, you're doing so in the steps of saints. Specifically, obviously, St. John Neumann, and I think, without too much delay, Blessed Francis Xavier Salos. You can walk the streets that a saint walked right here in the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, the point, the second point being, and sort of the conclusion of this homily, it's not enough just to follow literally in their footsteps, to walk in the streets that they walked, maybe to see some of the buildings that they would have seen. The churches that are there now, of course, were not there at the time, but to be in the same place where somebody who's now recognized as a saint by the church, it's not enough just to literally walk in their footsteps. Obviously, the more important thing, and this is why I encourage you to read his biography, is to metaphorically follow in their footsteps, to live our lives in such a way as to merit that which St. John Neumann has been granted, what Blessed Francis Xavier Salos, I suspect, will soon be granted, 
and that's the recognition of our sanctity, not just in this life, but the recognition also of sainthood in heaven, the thing toward which we should always be striving and the thing that should always be our hope as we live out our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Through the intercession of St. John Neumann, let us pray. That the Church may be perfected in love and in union with our triune God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may look graciously upon the needs of all nations and peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who live in fear may be upheld and strengthened by Christ's exhortation to be not afraid, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community of faith may be guided in all we say and do by the commandment to love one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died, especially uh, Violet Tanner, for whom this Mass is being offered, through the mercy of God, rest in eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us add our own intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us pray our parish prayer. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, you told, told us where your treasure is, there, there your heart is also. The parish, the parish of Holy Spirit, Spirit treasures our faith in you, our, our children, children, and every, every person who gathers here. Help, help us to have the courage to sacrifice, to love, and, and to build in your name. Guide us by your spirit of wisdom, give success to the work of our hands, and keep us in your peace. Saints, martyrs, and Mary our mother, pray for us. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Merciful Father, look upon the gifts we have placed upon your altar and grant that we may reflect the image of Christ, your Son, just as you granted to St. John Neumann to imitate what he celebrated through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John Neumann you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life teach her by his words of preaching, 
and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, William, William, and Mark, his assisting bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Everyone who has given up home, brothers or sisters, father or mother, wife or children or property for my sake will receive many times as much and inherit everlasting life.
Let us pray. Refreshed by our participation in the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, we ask, O Lord, that by the example of St. John Neumann, we may experience the power of this sacrament and remain constantly in the Church by the bond of unity and truth, through Christ our Lord. If I could ask your prayers for three specific intentions, uh, two of them concern individuals, oddly enough, named Chris. Uh, one, my friend Father Michael Ruffalo today is celebrating the funeral of his 45-year-old cousin uh, who died of cancer, I think, Thursday, uh, Saturday of this week, past week. Uh, he's a father of three boys aged, I think, 5, 7, and 15. Uh, so he leaves behind a young family. Unfortunately, he was one of those whose evaluations were deferred because of COVID, and by the time they caught it, he was stage 4. Uh, his name was Chris, so if you could pray for the repose of his soul. Uh, secondly, a brother priest, I won't say his last name for reason of respecting the privacy for his health, uh, but a priest friend named Chris, uh, he's been hospitalized and is in the ICU with COVID, uh, so please keep him in your prayers. And then finally, today is the anniversary of the death of my grandmother on my mother's side. Her name was Florence, uh, so if you would kindly keep those three intentions in your prayers. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Sponsorship for this program provided by the Ed and Don DeCarbo Funeral Home and Crematory Incorporated with two locations, 941 South Mill Street, Newcastle and 3000 Wilmington Road, Nishanik Township.